was a nice summer day. My five-year-old son James was playing outside in the backyard of our suburban home. James had always been a quiet boy. He played mostly by himself. He never had many friends. But he always had a wild imagination. I was in the kitchen feeding our dog Fido when I heard what sounded like James talking to someone in the backyard. I'm not sure who it was, but could he have finally made a friend? Being a single mom, it was hard for me to keep an eye on my son, so I decided to go outside and check on him. When I went to the backyard, I was a bit confused, because James was the only person back there. Was he talking to himself? I could have sworn I heard another voice. James, it's time to go inside. I called to him. He came inside and sat down at the kitchen table. It was about lunchtime, so I decided to make him a turkey sandwich. James, who are you talking to out there? I asked. James looked up for a moment. I was playing with my new friend, he said, smiling. I poured some milk and continued to pry as any good mother would. Does your friend have a name? Why don't you ask him to have lunch with us? I asked. James stared at me before replying. His name is Laughing Jack. I was a bit taken back by what he had said. Oh, that's a strange name. What does your friend look like? I asked a bit confused. He's a clown. He has long hair and a big swirly cone nose. And he has long arms and baggy pants with stripy socks. And he always smiles. I realized that my son was talking about an imaginary friend. I suppose it was normal for kids his age to have imaginary friends. Especially when he had no real friends to play with. It's probably just a phase. The rest of the day went by as per usual. It was starting to get late, so I put James to bed. I tucked him in, gave him a kiss, and made sure to turn on his nightlight before I closed the door. I was pretty tired myself. I decided to go to bed not long after. I had an awful nightmare, though. It was dark, and I was in some kind of run-down amusement park. I was scared, and I was running through an endless field of empty tents, broken down rides, and abandoned game huts. The whole place had a horrible look to it. Everything was black and white. The prized stuffed animals were all hung from nooses in the game huts, and all with sick grins stitched on their faces. It felt like the whole park was looking at me. Even though there wasn't another living thing in sight, then suddenly I began to hear music play. The sounds of Pop Goes the Weasel being played on a squeeze box echoed through the park. It was hypnotizing. I followed its tune to the circus tent, almost in a trance, unable to stop my legs from moving forward. It was pitch black and the only light came from a single spotlight shining in the center of the big top. As I walked towards the light, I found myself singing along, unable to stop. Round and round the mulberry bush, one, two, three, four, and I said, I'm not so fast as I would think. The music stopped right before its climax. And suddenly the light shot on. The intensity of the lights was practically blinding. All I could see was a small dark silhouette shuffle towards me. Then another one appeared. And another. And another. There were dozens of them. All coming towards me. I couldn't move. My legs were frozen. All I could do was watch as the haunted figures drew nearer. As they got closer to me. I could see they were children. As I looked at each one, I noticed that all of them were horribly disfigured and mutilated. Some had cuts all over their bodies, 
Some are severely burnt, and others have missing limbs, and even eyes. The children enveloped me, clawing at my flesh, dragging me to the ground, and tearing inside me. As the children tore me apart, and I faded away, all I could hear was laughter. Horrible, awful, evil laughter. I woke up the next morning in a cold sweat. After taking a few deep breaths, I looked over and saw that a few of James's action figures were positioned facing me on top of my nightstand. I sighed. James had probably woken up early and put these there. I gathered up the toys and made my way to James's room. However, when I opened the door, James was sound asleep. I shrugged and placed all the toys back into his toy box and I headed out to the living room. A little while later, James had woken up and I made him breakfast. He was quiet and he seemed a bit groggy. Perhaps he didn't sleep well either. I decided to ask him about the toys. James, honey, did you put the toys in mommy's room this morning? His eyes shot up at me for a moment and then quickly glanced back down at his cereal. Nothing about that. I rolled my eyes and responded. Well, you tell Laughing Jack to put the toys back in your room. James nodded and finished up his breakfast and then he decided to go play out in the backyard. I went to relax in the living room and I must have dozed off because I woke up a couple hours later Shit, I need to check on James. I was a bit worried. It had been over two hours, and I haven't even checked on him. I stepped out of the backyard, but James wasn't there anymore. I was getting nervous, so I called out to him. James? James, where are you? Just then, I heard a giggle come out from the front yard. I rushed to the gate, and to find in front of the house James was sitting on the sidewalk I breathed a sigh of relief and walked over to James James how many times have I told you to stay in the backyard James what are you eating James looked up to me and then reached into his pocket and he pulled out a handful of hard candies all in colors James who gave you that candy? James just stared at me, not speaking. James, please tell mommy where you got that candy. James hung his head down and said, Laughing Jack gave it to me. My heart sunk. I kneeled down to look at him in his eye. James, I have had enough of this damn Laughing Jack thing. He is not real. Now, this is a very serious situation, and I need to know who gave you the candy. I could see my son tear up. But Mama, Laughing Jack did give me the candy. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. James has never lied to me, but what he's telling me is impossible. I made him spit out the candy and throw the rest away. James appears to be fine. Maybe I'm just overreacting. After all, he could have gotten it from Tom and Linda next door, or Mrs. Walker down the street. Either way, I'm going to have to keep a closer eye on James. That night, I put James to bed as usual, and decided to go to bed early myself. Suddenly, I was woken up by a loud bang coming from the kitchen. I sprung out of bed and hurried downstairs. When I got to the kitchen, I was horrified. Everything on the counters had been thrown onto the floor, and our dog, Fido, was hung dead from a light fixture. His stomach was cut open and stuffed with candy, the same type that James was eating earlier that day. My shock was quickly broken by a sharp scream coming from James's room, followed by loud crashes. I quickly grabbed a knife from the drawer and moved up the stairs with a speed that only a mother whose child is in danger could have. I burst through the door and flicked on the lights. Everything in the room was knocked over and tossed on the floor. 
My poor son in his bed, crying and shaking with fear, a pool of urine staining his sheets. I scooped up my child and ran out of the house and went next door to Tom and Linda's house. Luckily, they were still awake, and they let me use their phone to call the police. It didn't take long for them to arrive, and I explained what had happened. They looked at me as if I were crazy, and they searched the house. But all they found was a dead dog in two trashed rooms. The officer told me that someone had probably gotten into the house and done this right before making a quick escape. When they heard me coming down the stairs, I knew that wasn't true. All the doors were locked and none of the windows were open. Whatever was in the house, it didn't come from outside. The next day, James stayed inside. I did not want him to leave my sight. I went to the garage and I found his old baby monitor and set it up in his room so that if anything comes into his room tonight, I was going to be able to hear it. I went to the kitchen and grabbed the largest knife from the drawer and put it on my nightstand. Imaginary friend or not, I'm not going to let anything hurt my little boy. Soon enough, night came. I put James to bed. He was afraid, but I promised him that I wasn't going to let anything happen to him. I tucked him in, gave him a kiss, and turned on his nightlight. Before closing the door, I whispered to him, Good night, James. I love you. I tried to stay up as long as I could, but after a few hours, I felt myself drifting off. I knew my baby would be safe for the night, and I needed to sleep anyways. Just as I lied my head on my pillow, I heard a soft noise come from the baby monitor that I had put on my nightstand. At first, it sounded like an interference, like the kind a radio would make, and then it turned into a soft moan. Was James asleep? Then I heard it, the laugh from my nightmare, that horrible laugh. I sprung up from the bed and grabbed the knife from under my pillow. I rushed over to James's room and creaked the door open. I tried the light switch, but it wouldn't come on. I took a step in, and I could feel warm, thick liquid on, on my feet. Suddenly, James's nightlight came on, and I could see the absolute horror laid out in front of me. James's body was nailed up on the wall, the nails piercing through his hands and and his feet. His chest was cut wide open, and his organs hung onto the floor. His eyes and tongues had been removed, along with most of his teeth. I was disgusted and could hardly see, believe that this was my baby boy. And I heard it again, a soft, desperate moan. James was still alive, my poor baby, in so much pain, barely clinging to life. I ran across the room and vomited on the floor, but my sickness was interrupted by a horrible cackle coming from behind me. I spun around and still wiping the bile from my mouth. Then I saw the shadows emerge from the fiend responsible for all this horror, Laughing Jack. His ghost white skin and matted black hair hung, from his sh hung to his shoulders and he had piercing white eyes and he was surrounded by black rings. His twisted smile revealed a row of sharp jagged teeth and his skin didn't look like skin at all. It looked almost like rubber or plastic. He wore a patchy, black and white clown outfit with striped sleeves and socks. It, the body itself was grotesque. His arms were long and hanging down past his waist, and the way he was poised make, made him almost look boneless, like a rag doll. He, he was... He let out a sickening laugh as if to let me know that he was pleased with the reaction to his work. And he then turned around slowly in front of James and began to laugh even more as at the terrible sight that he had laid out. This was enough to shake me from my terror. I snapped. Get away from him, you bastard! I rushed at the monster, raising the knife above my hand, and... I stabbed down at him, but 
As soon as the knife touched him, he disappeared in a cloud of black smoke. The knife passed through him and pierced James' still beating heart, splashing the warm blood on my face. No, no, what have I done? I killed my baby. My baby. I immediately fell to my knees and I could hear sirens in the distance growing louder. My boy, my sweet baby boy. I promised mommy would protect you, but I failed. I'm sorry, James. I'm so sorry. Police soon arrived to find, find me in front of my son still wielding the knife covered in my baby's blood. The trial was short. Insanity. I was placed in the theoretical house for the criminally insane where I've been for the past two months. I can't get out of here. The only reason I'm awake now is because someone is playing Pop Goes the Weasel outside my window. I will talk to the order wise about it in the morning. Round and round the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought it was all fun. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> <laughs> Like this video, then make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And make sure you follow me on Twitter to request any creepypasta readings that you would like for me to do. This is Shadow Blazer, and I will see you soon. <laughs>